All right, class. So last time we said we want to be able to draw covalent compounds, two non-metals together. There is no attraction of charges. They share electron, and we want to be able to draw that out. And we said that uh, non-metals, the atoms, they share electron in order to have eight valence electron. Because when you have eight valence electron, you are more stable. So they want to, that was the octet rule. They share in order to have eight valence electron. And when they share, they, are, they form covalent bond and two electrons are shared in each covalent bond. Now let's, let's actually go over Lewis structure this time and teach you how to draw Lewis structures. Again, Lewis structures is for covalent compound, okay? It's for covalent compounds. That's two non-metal together. For example, PCl3, because it's no, there's no attraction of charges, so we're just talking about sharing electron. All right, ready for rule number one? I have these rules for Lewis structure. You follow the rules, you're gonna be able to do any problem. Um, rule number one is find out the total number of valence electron, okay? So calculate the total number of valence electron. So calculate the total number of valence electron. Let's do it together. In this case, I have phosphorus, okay? Look at the periodic table. If you look at the periodic table, phosphorus has five valence electron. Now, if you look at the Cl, Cl has seven, and in our last lecture we talked about how to how to figure out how many valence electron you have based on the group number. Okay, Cl is in um, group seven, then it has seven valence electron, but I have three Cl. Okay, now if I add them up together, what I get is twenty six valence electron. And I want you to remember one thing. Valence electrons are involved in bonding. I want you to remember that. That valence electron, because they're the outermost electron, they are the electrons that are involved in bonding. Other electrons are way too close to the nucleus, so the, the, the nucleus is holding on tightly to them. They can't really play around. Valence electrons far away from the nucleus. They're, they're more free. They can, they're available, and those are the ones who are involved in bonding. So I have 26 electrons that are involved in bonding. So let's draw that out. So rule number one, figure out the number of valence electron, which we did. Now, the second thing, the least electronegative atom goes to the center. The least electronegative atom goes to the center and is usually the first atom, usually the first atom but excluding hydrogen, excluding hydrogen, okay? So excluding hydrogen. So the least electronegative atom goes to the center is usually the first atom, is usually the first one, excluding the hydrogen. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here. I have PCl3. So usually the, fir the first atom, which is P, is going to gonna go to the middle. You follow me so far? Okay. Now what you're gonna do, you're gonna put the seal around it. It doesn't matter how you put it around it, just put the seal around it. So the least electronegative atom, which is usually the first atom, goes to the middle. So the first atom goes to the middle, and then you're gonna put the seal around it. You following me so far? Beautiful. Okay. Now what are you gonna do? You are going to draw a bond between the center atom and the surrounding atom. So I'm going to draw a covalent bond between the center atom and the surrounding atom. You following me so far? Okay. Now, I need you to remember from last lecture, we said each covalent bond shares how many electron? What have we talked about? We said, each covalent bond shares two electrons, right? Covalent bond has what? It shares, each covalent bond would share two electrons. 
So each covalent bond will share two electrons. What that means is this is sharing two electrons, this is sharing two electrons, this is sharing two electrons. Okay. So how many electrons have I already put down? One, two, three, four, five, six. You following me? Okay. Now we're going to do some math and I hate math, but stay with me. So we said we had 26 valence electrons. So 26 electrons are involved in bonding. How many have I already put down? I've already put down six. So 26 minus six is, I have 20 electrons left. Then the next step, you have to make sure the surrounding atoms are happy. You have to make sure the surrounding atoms are happy, okay? Now, this CL has how many? It has one, two. It has two. Is it happy? No. It needs six more to be eight. Look at this CL over here. It has two. It needs six more to be eight. Look at this CL. It has two. It needs six more to be eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, this is beautiful. This CL has eight, happy, has eight, happy, has eight, happy. Just to double check that you, you are following me. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Happy, happy, happy. Beautiful. Okay, so my surrounding atoms are happy. How many electrons did I already put down? I put down 18 electrons, right? I put down six over here, six over here, six over here, six times three is 18. So how many electrons do I have left? I have two electrons left. Those two electrons are going to go on the center atom. So the center atom is the last one we do. It's going to go on the center atom. So I'm going to have no more electrons left. Now. Let's look at the center atom. Is my center atom happy? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. My center atom has eight, is also happy. It's beautiful. Now, when you put electrons on a center atom and these electrons are not really involved in a covalent bond, what I want you to do, I want you to put a circle around it like this or an oval around it. We call this lone pair. So these are the electrons that are on the center atom and they're not very involved in a covalent bond. They haven't formed a covalent bond. That's my lone pair. Everyone is happy. So 26 electrons were involved in bonding. I've put it all around it. There's 26 electrons involved and every atom is happy. Yay, we're good. Now, Again, we're going to keep doing practice problems to make sure you can follow my rule. And there's one last part about this rule. And I want to write it down. It doesn't apply here, but I want to write it down so I have gone over the entire rule. If center atom, in this case, my center atom was happy. If center atom is not happy and there is no more electrons left. So the center atom is not happy and no more electrons is left. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a double bond and or triple bond. So we make a double bond or triple bond when the center atom is not happy and I have no more electrons left. That was not the case here. My center atom was happy. And you'll see when this comes into play. So far, so good. Okay. Now, when you draw in this, okay, don't worry, we're going to do a lot of practice problem. When you draw in this, I told you it doesn't matter where you put the CL. You can put a CL on top, put it on the bottom, put one here, put one here, put one here. I said just put it around it. It doesn't matter where you put it. We're just trying to figure out where the electrons go. But after you figure out the Lewis structure, then you should have the correct geometry, exactly where the CLs go, exactly where the lone pair go. 
I emailed you guys a handout. Oh, where is my handout? Here it is. Okay, these are the Vesper geometry. What does Vesper stands for? You do not have to write this down. Valence shell electron pair repulsion. Who comes up with this acronym? I don't know. Valence shell electron pair repulsion. Okay. Now, what are these geometries? The way these geometries are set is basically puts the atoms far away from each other as they could possibly be. Because when you put the atoms far away from each other, then you're going to have less repulsion. So these geometries, which have been proven, they were based on putting the atoms as far away as they could possibly from the put from each other. So put them far away from each other because they would have less repulsion. It's kind of you and your siblings. When you guys are far away from each other, life is good. You love each other, right? Because there's no repulsion. When you're close to your sibling, uh, there's a little bit of friction going on. The same idea, right? Atoms, you want to be able to put them as far away as each other as you could possibly put them. So far, so good. So these geometries are based on that. Now, some of you guys might look at these geometries and go, are you sure that's as far as they can get from each other? Here's what you need to pay attention to. This is 2D, right? In reality, these geometries are 3D, right? So you may look at this and go, are you sure these are as far away as they could possibly be from each other? Maybe it doesn't look like that because this is 2D and in reality, they are 3D. Keep that in mind. All right, let's come over here. So I have a center atom. My center atom has a lone pair and my center atom has three bonds. What is the geometry? What do you think the geometry is? Center atom, three bonds, and a lone pair. So the geometry is pyramidal. The geometry is pyramidal. So this geometry was pyramidal. And this would be the right way to draw it out. So far, so good. Okay, again, we're gonna do a lot of practice problem. Ready for our, so this was pyramidal. This was our first one, ready for next one. Our next one is NH3. If you can, pause me and then go over it and then unpause me so you can see if you got it right. Rule number one, figure out the number of valence electron that you have. We have eight valence electron. Nitrogen is five and each hydrogen has one, three hydrogen, five plus three is eight valence electron. Valence electron are involved in bonding. So we have to account for eight electrons. I said the least electronegative atom, which is the first atom goes in the middle. So you put the first atom in the middle and I'm gonna put the hydrogen around it. It doesn't matter how you put it around it at the beginning. If you wanna put all the hydrogen here, go for it, one here, one here, one here, go for it. Just put the hydrogen around it. So the first atom goes to the middle, put the hydrogen around it. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw a bond between the center atom and the surrounding atom. We're good so far? Okay. And you know that each covalent bond has how many electron? Two. Each covalent bond has two electrons. So how many I have already put down? One, two, three, four, five, six. I've already put down six, so I have two electrons left. We said you have to make sure the surrounding atoms are happy. Is the hydrogen happy? Hydrogen is the exception. Hydrogen is happy with two. This hydrogen is happy. This one happy? Yeah. This one happy? Yeah. Remember, everyone wanted to have eight, but hydrogen wasn't greedy. Hydrogen was happy with two, and boron was happy with six. So yes, hydrogen happy, hydrogen happy, hydrogen happy. All right. I have two electrons left, though. Where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it on the center atom. I'm going to put it on the center atom. Again, that is not involved in a covalent bond. So I'm going to draw a little, put a little circle around it. Now, I have no more electrons left. 
Whoa, let's see what's going on in my center atom. Is nitrogen happy? Tell me. Hopefully you're saying, yes, nitrogen is happy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nitrogen also has eight. Okay, nitrogen is happy. So this is good. This is the structure of NH3. Well, what's the geometry? What would be the best way to draw this out? One center atom, three bond, one lone pair. Center atom, three bond, one lone pair. The lone pair look like aliens, don't they? Yeah. So it's also pyramidal. It's also pyramidal. So the geometry would also be pyramidal. So that would be the better way of drawing it out. So far, so good. All right, you ready for next one? Let's do it. You guys got this down. CO2, again, pause me, do this, and then unpause me. The first thing to do, number of valence electron. If you count it, you will get 16 valence electron. How did I get that? Again, go back to the part one, the last video, if you're having a hard time with valence electron. Um, carbon has four, oxygen has six, I have two oxygen, so six times two, 12 plus four is 16. Um, now, the first atom goes to the center, so I'm gonna put carbon in the center, and then I'm gonna put oxygen around it. Doesn't matter how you put it, just put it around it. So the first atom goes in the center, goes in the middle, and I'm gonna put oxygen around it. Then I'm going to draw a bond between the center atom and the surrounding atom. Between the center atom and the surrounding atom. Okay. Now, each covalent bond has two electrons, right? Each covalent bond has two electrons. It's been two electrons are being shared. So how many have I already put down? One, two, three, four. So 16 minus four is 12 electrons left. Then, go by the rules, don't get fancy on me, then you have to make sure the surrounding atoms are happy. Is this oxygen happy? This oxygen has only two. How many more does it need? It needs six more to be happy. Now it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now it's happy. Yay! How about this oxygen over here? It has two. It needs six more to be eight and be happy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because eight is a magic number. Okay, so my surrounding atoms are happy. I added six here and six here. Six plus six is 12. So I added 12 electrons. I have no electrons left. Okay, let's go to my center atom. Is carbon happy? One, two, three, four. <coughs> oh no. Carbon is not happy. Carbon has one, two, three, four. Carbon is not happy. And I have no electrons left. What do I do? Hmm. If center atom is not happy and there are no more electrons left, that's when you make double bond and triple bond. So this was the case. This was the case. The center atom is not happy. I have no more electrons left. Now I have to make double bonds and all that. Now let's do a little math together. So carbon has four. How many more does it need? It needs four more electrons. It has four. It needs four more electrons to be eight, right? So if I need four more electrons, that means how many more bonds does it need? Each bond has two electrons, so it needs two bonds. And I found the two bonds because each bond has two electrons, right? Each bond has two electrons, and carbon needs four more, so that would be two more bonds. So I have no more electrons. I have to make double bonds and all that to be able to do this, okay? So I'm going to make double bonds. I'm going to take this lone pair, these electrons, and make a double bond over here. And I'm gonna take two from here and make a double bond over here because I need two more bonds. So I have carbon 
then is going to be double bonded, double bonded to oxygen. And then I have only four electrons left here, four electrons left here. Okay. Now, and let me still, oh no, no, what did I do that for? Let me draw this out still too. So everyone is happy. Is carbon happy? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Carbon has eight. Oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, eight, eight. Everyone is happy. And the octet is 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 um is completed. So far so good. This was a big one. Don't worry, I'm gonna keep doing practice problem. Now the geometry. What would be this geometry? When you look at the geometry to figure out the Vesper geometry, I want you to keep in mind that the double bond and triple bond, they really have no effect on the geometry. They have an effect on the bond length. The length of the bonds are different, but in overall geometry, over in the shape, it doesn't have an effect. So double bond and triple bond have no effect on the shape. All right, so what would be the geometry over here? I have carbon, bond here and bond here, no lone pair on the center atom. So the geometry would be linear. The geometry would be linear. So remember, double bond and triple bond, they would have no effect on the shape, okay? So this would be linear. This would be linear. That was a big one. Ready for the next one? Let's do it, let's do it. Okay, H2O, pause me. Draw the Lewis structure for H2O and then we're gonna go over it. All right, now that you have unpaused me, let's go over H2O. H2O, number of valence electron is eight. Okay, hopefully you got that part. Now, the first atom usually goes to the middle, uh, excluding the hydrogen. Hydrogen will never go to the center. Hydrogen will never go to the middle because hydrogen has only one electron and it could only make one bond. So when I said the, the rules over here, I said the least electronegative atom goes to the center, usually the first atom excluding the hydrogen. So the hydrogen will never go to the middle. So what's gonna go to my middle? Oxygen is gonna go to the middle and I'm gonna have hydrogen here and hydrogen here. Again, doesn't matter how you put it at the beginning, just put the hydrogen around it. Oxygen to the center, hydrogen around it. I'm going to draw a bond between my center atom and my surrounding atom. I'm going to draw a bond between my center atom and my surrounding atom. Okay. Now, we talked about it. Each covalent bond has two electrons. Each covalent bond has two electrons. So how many have I already put down? One, two, three, four. Okay. So A minus four is four electrons left. You following me so far? Nice job, guys. Now, let's make sure, you have to make sure the surrounding atoms are happy. That gets priority. Is hydrogen happy? Hydrogen is happy with two, it's not greedy, yes. Is hydrogen happy over here? One, two, yes. Hydrogen is also happy. My surrounding atoms are happy. I have four electrons left. So I have to put those on the center atom. One, two, three, four. I have to put those on the center atom. So now I have no more electrons left. Now I have no more electrons left. Again, on the center atom, I have these electrons that are not involved in a covalent bond. So I'm just gonna put a circle around it. We call those lone pairs again. Those are lone pairs. You have to have a pair, right? Two is one lone pair, two is one lone pair. All right, is oxygen happy? Hopefully it is. If it's not, I would have to make double bond. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, oxygen is also happy because oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I use all the electrons and everyone is happy. Yeah, beautiful, that's water. Make something you're drinking water. You can go, oh, I know how to draw that. Um, now look at the geometry. What's the shape? So I have a center atom, the oxygen, two bonds around it to hydrogen, and oh, I have two lone pairs. So I have to come down here. Center atom, two bonds, 
too long per on the center atom. Bent is a geometry. Bent is a geometry. Again, you really have to think about 3D when you look at a geometry. Bent is a geometry. Yeah, you guys are feeling pretty good about this? All right, beautiful. Because, ready for next one? Ready for next one? Let's do the next one. Um, let me see. Do I want to do the next one? Yes, I do. Let's do the next one. Next one I'm going to do is, this is a hard one. And I think you can do this. SO2. Please pause me, do this, and then we're going to go over it. Okay. Number of valence electron, 18 valence electron. Because sulfur has six, and then each oxygen has also six, so six times three, 18 valence electron. Sulfur is gonna go to the middle, okay? The first atom usually, go, usually goes to the middle, or if you wanna be more proper, the least electronegative atom goes to the middle. And then I'm gonna put the oxygen around it. Doesn't matter how you put it, just put the oxygen around it. Then I'm gonna draw a bond between the center atom and the surrounding atom. You did very good so far. You just make it closer to that. Okay. Now, each covalent bond has two electrons. Each covalent bond has two electrons, right? Each covalent bond has two electrons. So how many have I already put down? One, two, three, four. I've already put down four. So 18 minus four is 14 electrons left. Then you have to make sure your surrounding atom are happy. Is oxygen happy? He only has two. He needs six more to be happy and have an octet. Okay. Is oxygen happy? No, he has only two. He needs six more to have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this oxygen is happy and this oxygen is happy. My surrounding atoms are happy. Okay. How many did I add? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, right? So I have two electrons left. Where do they go? They're gonna go on the center atom. They're gonna go on the center atom. So the left, since my surrounding atoms are happy, they have to go on the center atom. Since my surrounding atoms are happy, they have to go on the center atom. I have no more electrons left. Now, we have to see if my center atom is happy. What do you think? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no, it's not happy. So what are we gonna do? So again, one, two, three, four, five, six. My center atom is not happy. One, two, three, four, five, six. My center atom is not happy. Okay, let's do this together. How many more does sulfur need? So sulfur is not happy. I'm going to do a sad face. How many more does it need? Needs two more electrons. Do you guys agree? Let's go over this one more time. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So my surrounding atoms are happy. This one is happy. This one is happy. Again, I have no more electrons left. And my center atom, one, two, three, four, five, six, my center atom is not happy. Center atom is not happy, so only atoms are happy. I have no more electrons left. Okay, no more electrons left, I can't give it anything. We said every time there is no more electrons left and my center atom is not happy, what do I do? I have to make double bonds and triple bonds and all that. Now, how many more electrons do I need? This one only needs two more electrons. If I only need two more electrons, that's only what? That's only one double bond. Because each bond is sharing two electrons, right? So if you need only two more electrons, that's only one double bond. Before with CO2, carbon needed four more electrons. That was two bonds, so we made two bonds. But here, the sulfur only needs two more, so we have to make one double bond. Well, how are we gonna make the double bond? Are we gonna take it from this oxygen or the other oxygen? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, so there's two ways. You can take it from this oxygen and give it a double bond. 
If I do that, it would be S. Don't forget the lone pair on S. That's still there. Then this would be a double bond. And I have the oxygen over here. Let me make sure everything is pretty much the same. I'm going to just draw this out too so that you still know that those are. And the oxygen has one, two, three, four. Okay, so if I do that, I can do this. Or you can also make the double bond over here. I can also do that too. I'm actually going to try it out. So some of you guys might have gone this compound. You might have made the double bond on this side. You might have made the double bond on this side. That's okay. Which one is right? They're exactly the same. These two are exactly the same. If I flip this, I would get that. If I flip this, I would get this. So you can bring the oxygen, you can bring the double bond from this side, or you can bring the double bond from the other side. But again, I only need two more electrons. So do not do it from both sides. I only need two more electrons. So I only need one more double bond. It could be from this oxygen, or it can be from the other oxygen. So it can be from either one oxygen. And again, and these two are the same. These two are the same, right? It doesn't matter. It's a symmetrical compound. It's, there's a symmetry here. So it doesn't matter which side we do it. If I flip this, I will get that one. This was a hard one. If you got this down, if you got this down, then we are in a really, really good shape. All right. Very nice job. Now, next time, what we're going to do, we are going to go and go ahead and do a couple more practice problems. Actually, you know what? Let's do the practice problems right now. Why not? Let's do a couple more right now. Ready for the next one? The next one is BH3. BH3. Oh, you know what I forgot to do, guys? What is the geometry of this? What's the geometry of this? I have a center atom. There's two bonds around it, and it has a lone pair. What is the geometry of it? Remember, the double bonds and the triple bond, they don't really change the shape. Take out a geometry sheet and tell me what's the geometry. Here's my geometry sheet. Okay, so what I have, I have a center atom, two, two bonds around it, and a lone pair on top. So hopefully, you're telling me that this is bent. Hopefully you're telling me that this is bent. So far so good? Okay. All right. I want to give you some take-home problems actually. That's better because I think you guys have done so much. BH3, PF5. BH3, PF5. What I want you to do, I want you to draw the Lewis structure and figure out the geometry. That would be your take-home even though you're already home. Okay, that will be your take home.